say congratulations Work so hard, forgot how to vacation Hey, hey, okay, welcome to vlog number two. So this is a really special one for me. Um, I'm coming up to my two years sober um, on Monday the 26th. So you guys will see this after I've been two years sober. So it's a pretty special moment. Um, the statistics are something like only 2% of addicts will actually make two years sober. So it's a big milestone for myself. And to celebrate, I suppose, what I'll be doing is um, giving my top 10 tips of how to stay sober. So if anyone's going through any, any problems with addiction, it doesn't matter what it is, um, you can share this, you can tag your friends as well. So just get around it guys. I'll also be going back and seeing my old counselor as well, having a chat with him and, and going through some stuff with him also. So I hope you guys enjoy the, the, the vlog and get a little bit out of it if it's yourself or it's a friend as well. So let's get into it. First, before I get into the tips, uh, the reason why I came up with these tips is because when I put out my first video um, releasing after my, my confession of all my addictions, I got a lot of hit ups of um, you know what what I do so I came up with these 10 tips and I've got them written down so if anyone wants me to email them just you know private message me as well so you can do that and I'll email them through to you as well but here's the video so let's start it off with uh, my tip number one my tip number one um, is surround yourself with positive people, the right people. So have you ever heard the saying, you're the, you're the product of the five closest people around you? Uh, I truly believe in that. If you, you know, you're hanging out with successful people and happy people, then you're more likely to become successful and happy. But if you're hanging out with drop kicks or you're hanging out with drug addicts, you become a drug addict. So that's just my train of thought of how that works and I'm, I'm lucky enough that I've got a really good uh, bunch of people around me, my family of course, number one, um, Chloe as well and then uh, very, very lucky with the staff and the people that I have around me at the gym but you know, those five closest people around you are very important so make sure that you are surrounding yourself with the right people. Um, it's very, very hard to you know make better decisions if the five closest people around you are continuing to making the wrong decisions as well. So, you know that's with everything as well. Like we always talk about with our training, with our eating. You know, if, if you've got a mate that's not going, to, not not training, you know you're more likely to not train as well. It's easy to train with your best friend than it is to train by yourself. So that's that's tip number one, and that's surround yourself with the right people. Tip number two. So for tip number two, I have avoid toxic environments. So for me, I use coke, um, prescription drugs, gambling, and I was an alcoholic to an extent as well. What I do is avoid the pubs and the clubs and the leagues club. Um, you know, spent way too many hours gambling and drinking and obviously doing coke in those places as well. So that was my first thing was stay away from those environments. Now, going on back onto surround yourself with the right people, I still have friends that um, that did still take drugs and still drank as well. But what I did with with still seeing those guys is, is eliminate myself from the toxic environment still. So I would go and see those friends that were still drinking and whatnot, not when they were drinking, but if I, if I would create the, the healthy environment to see them. So. For example, rather than meeting them at a pub or a club, I would meet them for a breakfast or a dinner. Those types of things. So I was still meeting them in my environment. Now I might sound a little bit biased, but I think the best place to um, for me was to go meet them at the gym. You know, we created this thing called a Fresh Saturday. So that is something that's going to be going on for the lifetime of Reborn because it's about the bigger picture that every Saturday we allow um, our clients to bring any of their friends along for a free session, or free session, sorry. Um, and the whole game plan behind that is so we're creating these healthy lifestyle changes so that people are then meeting each other in healthy environments on the weekend. Hopefully that starts a, a healthy start to the weekend which leads to a proactive uh, weekend which leads to ultimately a proactive week at work. So that's tip number two is avoid toxic environments. Okay, so tip number three is replacing your bad habits with healthy habits. So for me, um, it was surrounded around the weekend was my bad habits. I tend to um, have pretty productive weeks at work. You know, I was running my own business at the time and then 
come a weekend I would more or less piss it all away so for me it was all about creating healthy habits on the weekend so when I landed from from rehab um, one of the things that I really enjoyed was obviously training so I would train most Fridays and um, almost every Saturday probably for the first three months that I was home um, for me this helped because once I trained I, I generally uh, felt good and didn't need to be chasing any more endorphins as well but um, I felt that you know I was getting better every time that I trained stronger physically yeah but more so mentally so that was a big one you know I think that a lot of people's problem bad habits um, stem from their weekend choices so um, making better healthy uh, choices on the weekend and replacing those bad habits with healthy ones and the only way to do that is find something that you enjoy so training came easy to me but it, you know it could be whatever you want might be drawing might be writing uh, might be reading books whatever it is that you know you're passionate about or you've got you can turn into a hobby I think that that's the best way to to go down is um, you know honing on those things that you enjoy so that's tip number three guys okay guys tip number four now this might sound a little bit biased because I own a gym but my tip number four is to train uh, I know for me that it helped me massively during my toughest times uh, I was able to be my anchor for for my life as well when things are a bit tough I could go train and it would naturally make me feel better through the endorphins and just naturally feeling better and better and stronger and stronger physically but more so mentally as well um, I want to read out something that uh, Paddy Carr once said to me and it's stuck and I've actually got it written in my tips the one thing that is known to reduce the chance of every disease and ailments known to man is exercise. If it were a prescription drug, it would be the most valuable drug in the world. Yet, it is free to everyone and can be used anytime, anywhere you want. So, no excuses guys. My tip number four is the train. Okay guys, tip number five. I recommend that you go and speak to a counsellor. Um, whether that be you know, a psychologist or addiction counsellor, whether whatever's more suitable to your situation, but just venting and telling your your stories and things that you've been through just releases a lot of demons, so to speak. Um, it just feels like you get a lot out from here, and it just feels like the weight is is lifted immediately. So I found for me that helped a lot. Um, if if you're a recovering addict, then um, going to the NAs, GAs, or AAs can help. I know at the start, or especially over in Thailand, when um, we would open up in our process groups, they would always help me um, share my story because then you'd, be, you'd hear people that were relating to your story as well. And then also you get to hear their stories um, back, which you know makes you feel um, normal, so to speak, which is kind of what you know recovering addicts or addicts are kind of, that's what they're craving, is just to feel feel normal. So if you, if you can, go speak to a counselor or attend meetings. Now, if you're not comfortable in speaking to people or you know someone close to you or that someone that's gone through similar situations that you're going through now, the next, next best thing I suggest that worked for me is start journaling. So writing down the things that are going on in your life or the things that have happened in your life that you kind of want to map out and understand why they happen. So writing things down, I, I used to um, write letters to everyone that um, I wanted to apologize to. So that helped me immensely, you know, um, just just feel like that was, that was solved, those kind of problems as well. So writing the letters, it, it helped, helped me quite a bit, you know, um, bring those partnerships and relationships back together. Now today I'm actually going to see my counsellor. So I, when I got home from rehab, I seen my counsellor for three months. Um, after one month of rehab, and then came back in three months of outpatient with um, Josh so at, at, at the cabin. So we're gonna go and speak to him today and we're gonna learn a little bit more about um, addiction he's going to give his insight of what he thought of my recovery when I came home so I look forward to sharing that with you guys as well
All right, guys, so I'm here with my counsellor. Um, I, after I came back from rehab, Josh was uh, the first and only uh, counsellor I saw. Um, we're just going to catch up. As I do, you know, uh, last year I caught up with him after my one year sober, and then this coming up to my two year sober, I'm doing the same thing. But I spent three months straight with, uh, with Josh, when, which was twice a week, and he helped me immensely. And, and just like my tip number five, you, you've got to go speak to someone, and if it's a professional, then you're, you're in the best hands possible. So this is Josh. Um, you got anything to say about what you do at the cabin? Okay, so basically um, I'm a counselor here. We've been uh, operating here uh, for about three years now. I've been working in rehabs for about 11 years. So what we do here is we do follow up treatment um, for people like Trav that, that have gone over to the cabin Thailand because it's all well and good getting clean and being in this environment, but then it's like you come back to your old environment and back into to day to day work, you, you need that ongoing support because if it is addiction, uh, we need to have, look at it as like a chronic illness, it's something that just doesn't go away with 28 days of treatment. So we offer uh, individual counseling where we talk, uh, we, we, go through the work that they've done in the cabin but also to go through some uh, relapse prevention strategies but I think it's about talking about what's going on for a lot of um, people especially guys and girls that like people aren't talking about what's going on and uh, they're not really uh, and that has to come out somewhere they're suppressing a lot of their emotions and stuff so the ongoing care is is paramount for anyone in recovery. It's not just recovery from substances. It's like um, it could be mental health issues as well, depression, uh, anxiety, bipolar, anything like that. It's humans need human beings, you know, to talk to. Um, and I think here, what we try to do is build a community of people that are like-minded that really just want the best for each other. And I think that really works having that community support. You yeah. know, because you've talked about you've, you've you're lucky you've got really strong family support, and uh, you know some people don't have that, so they need that ongoing support as well within the community, right? Yeah, hundred percent. And yeah. as well, like once I came here, like not only did you know I felt felt welcome, but I've actually made you know three or four really good mates, and I'm still mates with today, and, and obviously still stay in touch with Joshy as well. Yeah. So it's really good to have that support network with you. You know, if, if times ever do. Uh, you know, get tough. I know that Josh is only one phone call away as well. Yeah, definitely. I think it's like maintenance as well. Like I'm always in maintenance as well. Like um, with recovery, just just making sure that I'm doing what I need to do. You know, and and having that meaning and purpose in our lives. And we were talking about it before, being um, coming from feeling use, useless to to feeling useful. You know, helping other. That's yeah. what I've seen has really help, helped you. Um, seeing that you've actually got a lot to give other people, not just in your personal training, but also to uh, as a person, you know. What did you? Th what do you think the difference is between myself and other um, recovering addicts that are still sober compared to the other addicts that are, you know, they continually relapse? I think it's about uh, what I see with you is you got to a point where you were ready, um, and you, and the motivation for you was is that you wanted to be happy. Um, and you were doing it for you, yeah you, you, yeah, you have your family and stuff, but you wanted to do it for you, but you also give back and, you're, and you've and you got meaning and purpose in your life. A lot of people will come back from the cabin or they'll go to, like, some people come here just for individual counselling to start off with, and then they might come for a few sessions and the uh, complacency kicks in. Yeah. So it's like, and, and from what I get with you, you don't, uh, you don't have the complacency, you have more of a healthy fear of what it would be like to relapse. Yeah, 100%. Because uh, I think someone gave me the advice uh, in my own personal life, remember the last week of uh, when you're in addiction and your first week in recovery and it's like that stuff uh, really uh, helps in the future, yeah. you know. But I think it is important to have that c common unity, you know, having that people and you seem to have it um, with your gym and, and, and with the people around you and you know I've got two young sons as well like we're not, we're not just doing this for, for us but also to showing our boys an 100%. example you know yeah, because example. we were talking about it before in society it's just like okay let's celebrate have a drink 
And people ask me, and they go, oh, why, why can't you, especially if I go overseas, why don't I drink, you know? And it's like, they, they look at me like I'm the weirdo. Yeah, we're weird, yeah. And it's just, and they, they think, uh, they think they can think what they want, but for me, it's like, okay, some people can do that, but for me, I, I don't even want to do that exactly. anymore. Exactly, yeah, I'm the same. You know? All right, Joshy, well, uh, if you guys need uh, to get in contact or you have any friends that might want to get in contact with Josh, um, don't be afraid to message me and I'll send his contact details over. But thanks, Andrew, Joshy. No, nice to see you again. Nice well see done. You. Two years. Yes. Fantastic. Okay, guys, tip number six. So, what I recommend, and I might sound biased again because I'm a personal trainer, but tip number six is to eat healthy. So, our stomach has direct links to our brain. So what that means is if you eat shit, you're generally gonna feel like shit. And when we feel depressed and feel ill and feel sick, that's when we generally make the, the bad decisions. So avoid the bad meals. And what I what I believe, and I don't I'm not saying sit here and sit here saying eat lettuce and carrots and that's it it's just eat whole foods healthy foods so make better lifestyle choices with your foods and make sure that you're eating around the 90 10 method which is what i go off so 90 percent good 10 percent bad that means try not to have maccas more than once in a whole month or kfc or pizza or anything like that avoid those ones as much as possible if if you can eliminate completely out of your diet you notice when you feel better you make smarter decisions, and when you feel worse, that's when the dumb decisions come in, guys. So, tip number six, eat healthy. Okay, tip number seven. You cannot fix a problem with another problem. Now, before I went to rehab, I was full of drama, always creating problems. Um, I was consistently making bad mistakes and the worst part about it was that I was blaming everyone and everything around me rather than having a look at it myself and you know trying to focus on you know what the solution was I just thought that everyone else was the problem so I well, since I got to rehab and came out of rehab I've realized life's so much easier if if you know you don't create the problems to start with but in life, we always run into problems no matter what. That's just how things are. But the, the, the easiest way to get through it is you focus on the solution and not the problem. Or you don't create more problems. So my biggest issue was that if I was you know, creating problems on the weekend, on last weekend, with friends, family, partners, business, work, and then after that, rather than solving the problem, I'd go out the next weekend to escape the problems that I created the week before. So I was only making more and more more problems rather than focusing on the problem which was me and myself and my addictions that I had going on and I was only feeding that beast. So my suggestion guys is you focus on the solution, not the problem. Don't blame other people for what's going on in your life. Figure out what you're doing wrong and what you can control and just focus on that. So, tip number seven, guys. You cannot fix a problem with another problem. Okay, tip number eight. So, my tip number eight is to set goals. Now, why I love goals so much, or setting goals so much, is that it gives me direction. And as well, every time I accomplish that goal, it's a, it's a huge achievement. Whether it's big or small, I like to celebrate them. So, one, every month sober that I, I, I rack up, you know, it's another it's another milestone for me. So, setting small goals is really, really important. So, what I recommend you do is set goals that it can be achieved between one and three months. So, what that's going to do is rather than going really, really big, it's something you can achieve work towards every single day. So, you write these one to three month goals, you work backwards, set your goal, and you work out the steps on how that you are going to achieve it throughout the one to three months. So, what that does, again, it gives you that clear path of what you want to achieve and when you're going to achieve it. Now, this just gives you a little bit of a clearer mind and gives you a little bit more purpose as well for what you're doing throughout your day-to-day -day life. I love this stuff. Like, I'm really passionate about, you know, having good structure and how, how good, good structure can be for your life and moving forward. So, this is a big one, guys. So, if you can, set goals 
one to three months, once you achieve those goals, guys, then go for six month goals, 12 month goals, you know? And then you can even start setting you know, your five year plan. So, tip number eight, set your goals. Okay, guys, so tip number nine, read, learn, and listen. So, this is something when I was in school, I was very, very bad at. I never read any books, I never listened to any uh, podcasts, and I was not really that willing to learn when it came to this, the theory side of things. I was always good at the practical, but not so much the book stuff. But I believe since um, I've started reading books, since I got back, that I just find that one, it's like a meditation form for me. I get, I clears my mind. Um, I can get zoned in on the book and I feel a lot clearer after it. But two, I feel like you're growing as well. And the next thing I like to do is is write, um, listen to sorry, listen to podcast every week. So I got a guy that I always listen to, Andy Fazilia, um, also Gary V. He's very good, and Joe Rogan. So depending on what kind of uh, mood I'm, I'm in, I listen to any of those three guys. Most of the time, it's Andy Fazilia. It's very business orientated. So I just like to listen to that, and I feel like I gr I'm growing every time I'm listening to that, and I'm making sure I'm reading, you know, up to t up 10 pages minimum a day as well. So that's my tip number nine, guys. Nice and simple and easy for some, tougher for others. But read, listen, and learn, guys. Okay, tip number 10 in our final tip. So this is something that I would like you to do tonight. So, and that is, Practice gratitude. Now, practicing gratitude makes you feel more and more grateful for the things that you have around you rather than always constantly looking at the things you don't have. It's like the, the grass is always green on the other side, so to speak. So what I want you guys to do every single night for the next 21 days, it's a little challenge that I'm setting for you guys, is you're gonna write three positive things that happen to you today. So it might be as small as, you know, I'm happy that I've got hot water on this cold day, right? Nice hot shower, that might be that might be one of the things. Or it might be, you know, a huge day. I'm happy that I had my first child today. It might be huge like that. So write these things down every single night. And then also the next three things that I'd like you to write is three things you look forward to the next day. Now you might be lucky like myself and be excited to go to work or there might be a task at work that you're excited for or it might be you're excited to take your kid to do swimming lessons or you know, it might be excited for you know uh, a meal that's coming up. I know that my girlfriend Chloe, she likes, to, she likes to think about her meals about two days before. So whatever you're excited for the next day, write these three things down. Now why, why I ask you to do that before you go to bed is so that when you go to sleep, you're going to sleep in a positive way. You know, you're thinking about the exciting things that you got tomorrow and you're thinking about the things that you're grateful for that day. It gets you in that positive mindset before you sleep and we all know how important our sleep is. So, tip number 10 and our final tip, practice gratitude. Okay guys, that is my top 10 tips for staying sober and living a happier, healthier life. Now, final thought, no one can make you do it. If you want to do it, you have to wholeheartedly want to become a better person. Now, when those problems and tough times arise, and they do, that's just life, you have to focus on the solution, not the problem, and then move forward. You can't harp on the bad things in the past because that's where depression comes from. So moving forward, guys, focus on what your goals are, take the small steps, trust in the process. If you're focusing on that mountain ahead, you just may fall over that ant hole in front. That's my tips, guys. I hope someone got a little bit of out of it, and I hope you have a great day. Say congratulations